Urine infections are incredibly common. I don't think I go a day in clinic without seeing one. Luckily, they're generally easy to treat and there are a few things you can do to prevent them occurring in the first place. Stay tuned to learn more. Hi there, I'm Dr. Sinan, the GP, your source on all things health related for you and your family. Urine infections can occur anywhere along our urinary system. This includes the kidney, the bladder, and the tubes that connect these to the outside world. Most commonly, people get infections in the bladder as urine tends to pool there before we expel it when we pee. The medical name for this is cystitis and it means inflammation of the bladder. With cystitis, people usually need to pee urgently. This can be severe but usually disappears after you pass water. People need to pee more often and usually only small amounts are passed. They notice burning or stinging when they pee, like peeing broken glass. They may find blood in the urine. This is common and occurs because some of the teeny vessels lining our urinary system dilate and burst. They may notice lower tummy discomfort. When the bladder is infected and inflamed, you may notice some pain or discomfort and they may feel run down. Most infections will make us feel a little different and usually a little run down as our body tries to deal with the infection. FYI, it is possible to have a urinary infection without any symptoms. This usually happens in certain groups of people like pregnant women or postmenopausal women and diabetics. And this is why we commonly take urine samples from these types of patients when we get a chance. So who gets urine infections? Anyone can get a urine infection, including kids and men, but they most commonly affect women. Half of all women will have at least one of these infections in their lifetimes. Women tend to have them more as the tube that passes urine to the outside world opens much nearer to the back passage. The area around the back passage often has bacteria that can travel up this tube and cause infections. 80% of all urine infections are caused by only one bacteria found around the back passage and in our tummies, it's E. coli. Apart from being female, other things that make a bladder infection more likely are being pregnant. This sometimes causes the bladder to hold on to urine which can increase the risk of infection. Being sexually active. For some women, the act of penetrative vaginal sex can push bacteria towards the bladder. Menopause. Oestrogen decreases with menopause and the bladder lining becomes thinner and dried and more susceptible to infection. Diabetes. Diabetics often have more sugar in their urine and this sugar promotes bacterial growth. Having a catheter. Bacteria find it easier to get into the bladder via a physical object like a catheter. Physical abnormalities with your urinary system, like a different shape to your bladder, or a growth that may result in urine pooling more often, resulting in more chance of getting an infection. And finally, an immune system that's not working well, such as medications or medical conditions that suppress your immune system. What happens in clinic? So as this is a common condition, many women have had an infection before and recognize the symptoms quickly. Some try to manage the infection at home in the early stages, which is fine to do. And if symptoms persist, then they often get in touch with their GP. When I often see a patient, I'm interested to know more about things like the duration and the onset of symptoms. Was it quick or sudden or has it come on slowly? Do you have the symptoms we mentioned above or other symptoms that may suggest something also, such as vaginal discharge or a skin rash? Do you have any red flags, more worrying symptoms that could suggest something more serious? I'm thinking things like blood clots in the urine or flank pain or severe shivering or vomiting and more information about any of the risk factors for urine infections that I already mentioned, such as are you diabetic or pregnant or on any medications that could be weakening your immune system and whether you've had this type of infection before and if so, 
how recently, as this could be a partially treated infection. Do you have any allergies, as antibiotics is also likely to be the main treatment here. This type of infection is really common, and most people will respond well to a short course of antibiotics. Due to this reason, we often treat people over the phone or remotely if they have a good history for this and no red flags or worrying symptoms. If you do come into clinic, we may check some of your vital signs, such as your blood pressure or temperature, depending on how you feel and how ill you are, and we may feel your tummy for any tenderness or discomfort. This is usually just to exclude any other worrying causes and won't always be necessary. Most commonly, we take a urine sample and check it with something called a urine dipstick. This tells us if there is any blood or markers of infection. This is a good aid to diagnosis, but even this is not always necessary, especially if the history is suggestive of a simple urine infection. We may send the sample of urine to the lab to learn more about the type of infection, such as E. coli, or is it something else, and whether the infection is resistant to different antibiotics. Treatment is usually straightforward. If symptoms are really mild and you have no other risk factors, then your immune system may be able to fight the infection itself without antibiotics. This is great as you may be able to avoid the need for antibiotics, but it can sometimes result in prolonged symptoms, i.e. the discomfort going on for a week rather than treating quickly with an antibiotic. Sometimes we may give patients a delayed antibiotic prescription. Basically, an antibiotic course that they can start in the next day or two to see if your body can deal with the infection and if not, rapidly start the treatment without booking another appointment. Sometimes just knowing that you have the antibiotics to hand can be helpful and gives a little more confidence than trying to manage without medications. Most commonly, by the time people are contacting us, the symptoms are troublesome and a three to seven day course of an antibiotic is usually indicated. The exact antibiotic may vary slightly depending on where you live in the country due to local antibiotic resistance, but the common drugs we prescribe are either trimethoprim or nitrofurantoin. If you need it, you can also consider some simple pain relief like paracetamol for any discomfort and it's a good thing to stay hydrated. Most of these infections are uncomplicated and resolve without a problem and often last for about three days with treatment and about five days without. Sometimes these infections can be more complicated and this is usually due to those factors that we mentioned earlier, such as having a catheter or pregnancy. It's really important to speak to your GP urgently if your symptoms worsen rapidly or you get new and unexplained symptoms that develop such as vomiting or shaking with fever. Sometimes a bladder infection can become a kidney infection which requires a different type of treatment and people can become very sick with this. You should also get back in touch with your GP team if the symptoms have not fully resolved after completing the antibiotic course. This may indicate that the antibiotic did not fully do the job and remove the bacteria or that something else could be going on. Also get in touch if you keep experiencing recurrent infections. And by this I mean three or more infections in a year or two or more in a six month period. In this case you may need a longer course of antibiotic or further investigation such as a scan of your urinary system to check for any physical causes. Sometimes we don't figure out why people keep getting urine infections but we can almost always help to manage them. Can you prevent a urine infection? Well, one in four women with a urine infection will get another one within six months or so, so prevention is really important. The most useful things to prevent urine infections are the simple things, such as wiping your bottom from front to back after pooing. This avoids pushing bugs found in poo and around the back passage towards the opening of the urinary tract. Also, passing urine after sex. This helps to flush out any bacteria, and staying hydrated also does a similar job. Strictly from an evidence point of view, things like cranberry-related products and urine alkalizing agents, i.e. the sachets you get at the pharmacy probably don't work in and of themselves, although some people do swear by them. 
Personally, I don't recommend that people take them, but of course, if you find them helpful, they're almost certainly not harmful. Probiotics are very similar in that they may be helpful, but we don't know enough to confidently say, yes, you should take them. But just like cranberry products, they're unlikely to be harmful and you may find them helpful, especially after taking an antibiotic. Today's take home messages are, urine infections are very common. Most are uncomplicated and can be prevented with simple measures and if mild, may resolve themselves. If the symptoms are bothersome, get antibiotic treatment. It's safe, works well, and you usually get relief within 24 hours. Seek help if things don't improve after an antibiotic course or if your symptoms worsen suddenly. If you found today's topic useful, don't forget to share with your friends and family and click the subscribe button to stay in the loop. You can find out more at drsinanthegp.com. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future topics, I'd love to hear from you. So do message in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, stay healthy.